Hello, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com and today we're going to do an unboxing because I've been sent a nice little package and as we can see it says Canada Post so this will be from the other Tony of Cassette Comeback that's Tony Cruz who runs CassetteComeback.com over in Canada and he said he's sending me some interesting cassettes to look at so uh, Let's let's enjoy the the surprise together. It's like you know what is it? Life's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, and that's complete and utter rubbish because every box of chocolates that I've ever owned or had, you know, if you look in the lid, it usually tells you what chocolates are in them, or there's like a little booklet in it that says what chocolates are in them. Anyhow, enough of uh, rubbish in Forest Gump. Let's open this up and see what Mr. Cruz has sent us. See, she's a pro, he's a pro, it's nicely packaged. Ooh, Philips UC2s, I remember them bad boys. Yeah, there won't be 10 of them in here though. These, these are a slightly different box than what I had. But right, let's have a see what we've got, right. Okay, right, so we've got Grundig's, Grundig C90 Ferric Audio Cassette Stereo Hi-Fi Quality. And it looks like Sort of like a, a duplicator type cassette in the Grundy case. It doesn't even doesn't even say what type they are on the actual on the actual thing. I'm looking at the top. Well, we'll open one up. We'll have a look. So we've got two of them. What else have we got? Ah, the uh, the EQ Professionals. I, I did a video on an early version of these in white shells. Bing. So yeah, here's the. EQ Professional full retail version. We've got a couple of those. What else we've got? Ah, the Superior D. Yeah, I did a video on these as well. Here. Ding! Ah, TDK Professional AM46 Acoustic Master Type 1. So is this going to be the professional version of the uh, AD? Possibly? Polaroid. Now I remember these. These are Type 2. I remember someone saying these were uh, pretty bad. Or were they not? Let's have a look. Uh, these are global brand Northern New York. I mean, we didn't get them in the UK, but they look fairly late. Polaroid C90. Ah, Sony ZX. Now I've never actually uh, had one of these before, the ZX. So let's see if uh, this is as good as the other budget Sony's insofar as I've never had a bad budget Sony but yeah the Sony ZX Type 1 and uh, ah, the classic XL2S I'm sure I've done a video on these because these are awesome cassettes so what a what a lovely little uh, oh hang on hang on ha 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 I'm going there. I've got another one in here what we got ah so the CD it Type 1 yeah these are these are good as well so he sent me a nice little selection of stuff there so what shall we have a listen to well i'm curious about the grundig so let's dig a bit further into that one uh the eq professional i guess we can see if the final tape is as good or well if it's sort of as usable as the original version that i reviewed let's also have a look at the polaroid because I say I've never seen these before. Some people say they're good, some people say they're bad. Let's see what we can determine. And the Sony ZX, because I've never used the Sony ZX before. And maybe we should look at the TDK Professional. Oops, let's just drop that one on the floor. But these I've looked at before, these I've looked at before, these I've looked at before, and these two are duplicates. So uh, yeah, let me just tie this away and we'll start tearing some wrappers. And having a look, see what we got. Hockey ducky, right? So we're going to use the Iowa ADS nine hundred and fifty today. I haven't used this depth for a while, and 
you know, like I've always said, you know, you, you put stuff in a ZX9 or a, a Dragon or a CR7 or the Reebok and all that, it usually sounds amazing. But let's use a mid price deck for these decidedly entry level tapes. And you can just see that, you know, even though this is not a knack, you can make amazing recordings if you just get yourself a really decent deck. So let's just have a see how they start. Right, the first one out of the pile is the TDK. AM46, right, so it's going to be quite lengthy this, so because I'm going to have to buy all these up manually, so let's just fast forward this on a bit and uh, record play it, right, okay let's, uh, hang on let me just get the old recording going on the old volume, right, okay, right cool, right yeah, sorry, I'm just having to get these, the cassette sounds recording, right, let's go to the calibration, let's set these to the centre because, like I say, this deck is calibrated for like SA, so take Dolby B off and let's have a look at the calibration of this tape. Okay, so yeah, I mean, this is a, I think it's a D, it might be an AD, I'm not sure, that's a bit dirty, let's just give that a wipe, there we go. Right, so a bit under for the record sensitive, so let's crank that up a bit and then let's add some bias. Uh, a bit more record sensitivity, a bit more bias. Yeah, that's, that's pretty stable. Cool, right, okay, let's uh, turn this down a bit because we don't want to record it too hot. Right, uh, right, we're ready to record. So this first track, I've got a few, I forget what they're all called. This one is called Night Runaway by Anne Jones. So uh, let's have a listen. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was very good. I mean, this could be a D tape in here. I probably should have Googled it beforehand to see what the general consensus is tape is. I mean, that performed really well, but then late D's performed really well. Peaking at plus four, calibrated easy enough. Yeah, that's uh, it's really good tape. But, uh, you know, because it's got TDK Pro and Professional, how much more are you going to pay for this over the... You know the the, the non-professional version but yeah no that's that's a good take that right next one what have we got next right the eq professional so let's see how this calibrates compared to the tdk we had in before oh dear i can't can't see anything. Oh, 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 there we go. We've got, ah, I didn't fast forward it. Uh, fast forward it a bit first, shall we? Yeah, that's the way I think. Okay, right, that's quite a bit different from the TDK, isn't it? Um, let's set it back to the centre and see where we are. Okay, so let's take some bias away. See if that 
brings it up a bit okay and then add some rec sensitivity okay we're we're just we're just about there it's just uh, yeah it seems about there so okay same recording levels in fact uh, let's use the same tracking and we might as well use it on all of them so we've got a, a benchmark so to speak let's uh, do this again so this is night run away again so let's uh, have a see how it performs Okay, I'm going to turn this down a bit. Okay, um, right, I know it's a new tape and there's a lot to be said for people producing new tapes nowadays and they should be loaded and supported. That to me, I turned it down because it sounded distorted. Uh, when I cranked it down it didn't sound too bad but it was very hissy and the low end certainly down, sounded distorted to me. Um, you know. Like I said, I don't want to put people down because at least they are making new tape, but this to me doesn't sound as good as an RTM Fox or a Splice It Capture. And if you should, if you can, I'd, I'd go for them over this in preference. However, it certainly sounds better than, you know, the usual BKB Chinese tapes that we're getting. But then again, these cost more. So, mm, yeah, not blown away by that, but it, it is decent. Oops. Right. So, next one. Oh yeah, this one. The Grundig Ferric, which doesn't say what it is, and looks like a duplicator tape in a BKB style shell. Let's have a listen to this one. Let's reset this calibration to zero and let's see if this one will actually calibrate up, shall we? That would be nice. Right. Okay, it's low. Let's crank it up a bit. All right, just uh, give it a little bit of positive bias. A little bit more. Okay, it, it needs full rec sensitivity. I mean, I've really had to crank the record sensitivity up to get it there, but the bias is pretty much spot on. So let's have a see how this goes. So again, it's the same track, just for consistency. So, uh, yeah. Let's have a see how this works. See if it's any good.
Okay, let's crank this a bit. Okay, um, well, I'm very happy to report that certainly isn't a Type Zero. In fact, um, this song is very bassy because uh, apart from the hiss, you can hear it's very bassy even when you just listen to the source. But that actually performed really well. Um, and I don't know about notice. I don't know if you can see when I sort of tilted this. It's uh, can you see them three little dots? If they're not SKC hubs, they're certainly SKC copy hubs, which I know are out there. Because like I said, this shell is, is quite low rent. But, I'd say that sounds better than the EQ Professional. In fact, that, that was very decent. Very decent. I mean, I cranked it up quite a bit to six there. And it was running regularly at four. And yeah, I mean, it's a basic song to begin with. But no, that, that, that Grundy surprised me. I was expecting a, a modern Chinese Type Zero. But uh, no, it certainly isn't that. That's, uh, that's a very decent little cassette, that. Right, the next one. Oh, the only type two in the test. The Polaroid. So I'm not going to crank this. Well, actually, no. This doesn't smell like a pure chrome. So it's a ferrocobalt. Let's let's have a see how this calibrates. Okay, so it's a bit low again. Let's crank it up. Okay, we've cranked it up nearly to the top. Uh, ooh, not massively stable, but it's nearly there. That's, I think, just needs to take a little bit of the bias off. Yeah, we're about there. Okay, so, uh, consistency. Let's listen to this track again and see what this one sounds like.
Now, I remember reading somewhere that someone said that these Polaroid tights here were pretty awful. No, I didn't, that, that didn't sound awful to me. That sounded very, very decent, peaking up plus four. Like I say, it's a very bassy song, this, and I regret actually choosing it. I would have chosen something a bit less bass, but I guess it is giving them a good test out. But no, that that sounded really well, and if... I guess it, it's always a case with these late tapes that there could be a chance to put anything in there, and this has been good batch of ferrocobalt that they've put in as opposed to maybe a batch of hong kong pure chrome in some others that people have got because this isn't pure chrome from i can smell and it certainly handles more decibels than a pure chrome does but no that's that's actually a very decent cassette that it's all right that one right the last one <sighs> The Sony ZX, like I say, never had one of these before. It's cheap Sony. Some people say it's the budget rubbish stuff, but I've never met a bad Sony. Never met a bad Sony. So let's calibrate this one up. Set these back to zero. Like I say, these other tips need a lot of level to get there, but let's see what this Sony needs. Yeah, it needs some level. Not quite as much, but a positive bias there. More level, more positive. Come on, mate. Uh, take a bit of negative away. Okay, right, cool. I think we're about there. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, play this track again and see how the Sony performs. Right, I'm just pausing that one there because I've had a little thought, right? That that was really good, that. Let me just uh, put the calibration in. I'm going to put Dolby B on. I'm going to calibrate it again. Just make sure that it's right with the Dolby B. Uh, then I'm going to turn it down a bit. And let's have a listen to the rest of it with Dolby B on. Just out of interest. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Sony didn't make a bad tape, at least out of all the tapes I've used that have been Sony branded, they've all been superb. And that, that's as good as 
any entry-level ferric that I've ever used. Yeah, simple as that. So yet again I'd like to thank Tony Cruz of CassetteComeback.com in Canada for sending me these tapes to have a look at. So how would I rank them? Okay this is how I'd rank them. Fifth place the EQ Professional. Like I say again it's nice to make a new tape. This is better than most of the Chinese tape. I imagine this is some new Chinese formulation but again it can't hold a candle to a, a good old D. But compared to the stuff on Alibaba and all these other brands like Trevi and all that and even Knack stuff, it's better, it's decent, it's not spectacular. We'll treat it well and you'll get good recordings on it. So that goes fifth. In fourth place, what would I put in fourth place? In fourth place, I'll put the Grundig. A very bassy um, song I was using and it, it just struggled a little bit, but I'm sure with Dolby, and uh, drop it down to zero this is going to be a very decent cassette because like i say even at plus four it was coping really well and you know that 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 yeah that was decent enough it's it's like i say i've had a lot worse cassettes than that third place well the tdk m46 because well it's a tdk and it's a known quantity and let's be honest apart from the sony zx these are all less mainstream brands that you maybe don't appreciate or expect great performance from so this performed really well as a tdk should so it goes there oops it's gonna slide now second place i'm gonna to give to the polaroid because like i say uh, i've read that some of these are really bad but that performed like a very decent ferro cobalt type 2 to me picking up plus four performed really well i was very Pleased with that, yeah, it's a good tape. And then in first place, the Sony ZX, simply because this is the cheapest, this is about as cheap as Sony cassettes get now and probably did in the day, and it's still superb. When you put the Dolby B on it, cranked it down a bit, come on, it sounds superb. I mean, I don't like using noise reduction, as you know, but even at plus four, the only real differences was the hiss and this handled the bass of that bassy song really well so yeah sony never fails to disappoint sorry sorry that's completely wrong sony never disappoints and yeah that's just a a superb cassette so yeah um, like i say all of these will be available at cassettecomebackcanada.com so if you fancy some of them and you're over the other side of the Atlantic from me then get yourself over there and get yourself some purchase because uh, yeah they're really good and just for those of you in the UK and I sort of say Europe because I'm tentative about that um, if you go over to my website redmanorecords.co.uk you'll find I actually have some audio cassette blanks for sale including the superb BASF loaded C60s and I'll say this you know you heard me demo them in in another video if you want to see it's just uh, I think it's about two videos down from this one and they're superb and I'm selling them at the equivalent of a pound each sealed and for that price I don't think there's a better cassette for a pound or double that price available in the world yeah feel free to not say oh if only you could ship them anywhere in the world for a pound i'd buy some um i can't shipping shipping but the actual cassettes are nine pound 99 for 10 of them and i've got some other 10 packs in there as well you know i've got some skc super cd chromes uh i'm trying to think what else i've got off the top of my head in there that's a decent price all of them just go and have a look so yeah and the reason i'm selling them is not because i'm really getting back into the cassette game again it's just i got them for duplication for my record company but it turns out that 46 and 30s are actually the cassette lengths i need and i don't have a lot of use for 60s and 90s so it's time to uh, pass some of the savings on to you but anyhow that wasn't a short video but i hope uh, there was something in these that you liked piqued an interest or something you were just curious about but uh, there we go but until next time happy taping bye bye